At least two people have been killed and three others injured in a Russian air attack outside Kyiv, Ukrainian officials have said. A four-year-old boy and his 35-year-old father were killed in the attack on Sunday just east of the capital with President Volodymyr Zelensky claiming it involved a North Korean-made missile. In a post on X, Zelensky offered his condolences to the family of the pair he described as, tragically killed. Three other people were injured, including a 12-year-old boy, he said. There has been no immediate comment from Russia on the attack. Moscow's overnight strike also included 57 Iranian-made attack drones that were launched across Ukraine, 53 of which were destroyed by air defenses, Kyiv's Air Force said. Genady Trukhanov, the mayor of Odessa, also said on Telegram that an explosion had been heard in the city on Sunday and urged residents to stay in shelters. A fire broke also out at a cooling tower of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant on the eastern bank of the Dnipro River a de facto frontline snaking through southern Ukraine, with Kyiv and Moscow blaming each other for the incident. Russia, which seized control of the power station soon after it began its full-scale invasion in February 2022, said later on Sunday that the fire had been put out, according to the state-run TASS news agency. Moscow and Kyiv both said there was damage to a cooling tower and other equipment. While had been no detected spike in radiation levels, Ukraine's interior minister said it was intensively monitoring the situation from meteorological stations near the plant, which is Europe's largest nuclear power station. Zelensky reiterated his calls to Ukraine's allies for a full-fledged air shield that can protect all our cities and communities. Sunday's attack on Kyiv comes as Ukraine braces for more Russian attacks in retaliation for its recent cross-border incursion into the Kursk region. Kyiv dispatched hundreds of servicemen backed by armored vehicles, artillery and drones to the Kursk region on Tuesday, according to Russian officials, Ukrainian servicemen and media reports. On Sunday, Zelensky said that Russia had launched nearly 2,000 cross-border strikes from Kursk at Ukraine's Sumy region over the summer. Artillery, mortars, drones. We also record missile strike, and each such strike deserves a fair response, he said. The previous day he had acknowledged that Ukrainian forces were indeed fighting in Kursk, and said the operation was part of Kyiv's attempt to restore justice after Russia invaded his country in 2022. According to reporters with the AFP news agency, armored Ukrainian vehicles daubed with a white triangle, used to identify hardware being used by Ukraine for its offensive in Russia's western Kursk region, have been seen crossing the border region of Sumy. Kyiv's army has mounted its incursion inside Russia from the Sumy region, located in northeastern Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin has called the incursion a large-scale provocation by Ukraine, and the Russian military's chief of staff, Valery Gerasimov, promised to crush it. Russian authorities have also declared a federal-level state of emergency in Kursk. On Sunday, Kursk's acting governor Alexei Smirnov said at least 15 people were injured in the region's capital, also called Kursk, after debris from a destroyed Ukrainian missile fell onto a nine-story residential building. Everyone is receiving the necessary medical care, he wrote on his Telegram channel. As fighting in the area intensified on Saturday, Russian state news agency TASS reported that more than 76,000 people had been evacuated. Ukraine also announced it has evacuated 20,000 people from the Sumy region. On Sunday, Russia's army said it has halted Ukraine's advance in several places, hitting soldiers and equipment in areas up to 30 kilometers 20 miles from their shared border. Maria Zaharova, Russia's foreign ministry spokeswoman, warned that a tough response from the Russian army will not be long in coming. Her comments came shortly after Sunday's attack in Kursk. We strongly condemn these barbaric terrorist acts aimed at destroying civilian infrastructure, killing and intimidating civilians, she said. Zaharova also called on international organizations to condemn them. Although we are sure that the response will be shameful silence from the relevant structures, she added. Meanwhile, on Saturday, Moscow's ally Belarus also said it would send more troops to its border with Ukraine claiming Ukrainian drones had violated its airspace as part of Kyiv's military incursion into the Kursk region. At a meeting in Minsk, Belarus's President Alexander Lukashenko said, the Ukrainian armed forces violated all rules of conduct and violated the airspace of the Republic of Belarus. In the eastern direction, very close to us in the Kostchukovichy district. The spokesman of the State Border Service of Ukraine, 
Andriy Demchenko, has said that, the situation on the border with Belarus is unchanged and fully controlled, the movement of equipment or personnel has not been recorded.